Hi, everybody, and welcome and thank you for joining this discussion today about the ownership of medical device security. This is a discussion between MDMs, medical device manufacturers, and HDOs, health delivery organizations. Uh, by the end of this presentation, you'll have a few examples of how MDMs are working with HDOs to deliver more secure devices and manage risk throughout the entire device life cycle. I'm Emily Holmquist. I'm an engineer. I've been um, a technical contributor since 2010, right out of college. I joined a small medical device manufacturer. And is the audio okay? Okay, great. And um, yeah, so I've been doing this since 2010, and I'm currently at Sternum, where I'm now providing medical device manufacturers with the tools and the solutions to deliver secure devices. All right, so who here has not seen or heard this statement? Don't be shy. It's okay if you haven't. Okay, oh, this is great. I'm so, I was prepared for one or two people, but everybody's heard this. And I mean, you've, you've seen it here. It's, it's actually right there. I've seen it on lanyards. Um, but the reason I'm bringing this up to start our discussion is because this is our mission. It is our goal, MDMs and HDOs that unite us. We both want the same thing. Now, how we get there looks a little bit differently, and we have different challenges or burdens, like Frodo and the ring. <laughs> um, we're burdened. It's hard. It's hard to do. Um, when I was a, working with an MDM as an engineer, it felt like it couldn't be done, secure design. It felt like I didn't have the resources or the technology or the tools or the business support. We're not spending money on that this year. You, we, can't, we can't bring that in. That was really frustrating because I wanted to deliver secure de design, my colleagues did. Um, from the HDO perspective, their hands are tied. They do not design and develop the medical device. They receive it. And so now they're left with a choice. They can either accept the medical device and its potential security risks, or they can not accept the device and in turn not have that device delivering care to patients. Both suboptimal options, right? We, do, we just, we want the best. And this, this um, these burdens or these differences in parties has led to a tension, uh, a frustration. I've seen it firsthand for anyone that's worked in model contracts or negotiations between MDMs, it is, <laughs> a lengthy and sticky, tension-filled process. Um, I've actually seen one take go going on, like the actual information security addendum of a contract take over a year, going towards two years. And that, that just kind of blows my mind. I'm like, let's get this medical device into the hospital so we can start delivering care. Uh, but so, so this tension that's been going on for quite some time now between these parties has to change. We have to do something about it now because there's an urgency. Our critical infrastructure of healthcare is under active attack. I'm just putting up this most recent example. The purpose isn't to just discuss the example, but it's to emphasize the importance of our critical infrastructure, the threat landscape changing and these attacks happening. And this, so this example, it, it's not due to a medical device, but it's to say it's, it's a target, um, the, the whole infrastructure and medical devices are a part of that. So, so we know government agencies are responding to this particular crisis, but also um, medical device security, the state of medical device security. It's, it's better than it was five years ago but there's still more that we need to do. And that's why the FDA and other agencies have released updated guidance that's expanded their authority and is requiring manufacturers to do something now. Um, so yeah, this sounds dire and, and it, it really is, but the good news is there is a solution. There's 
a path forward for MDMs and medical device, or medical device manufacturers and HDOs collectively. And it's a combination of process and technology. And kind of what, like, what feeds this loop actually is the people aspect. And so that's the MDMs and the HDOs. But today I'm going to look at the process and the technology. So implementing secure design controls into the medical device as early as the conception, as soon as we have an idea that we wanna bring a new technology to the market, we need to start thinking about security. Um, alongside that is procedural controls. How do we do this? Who owns what? What are the roles and responsibilities? And it, by the end of this presentation, you'll have some examples of how this solution is working today. What what I pull from is my personal experience. I am a task group member of the Health Sector Coordinating Council. It, we created a publication called the Model Contracts. And you heard me mention uh, contract negotiations and what the Model Contract provided. It's a free publication that was created in a collaboration between MDMs and HDOs that defines the ownership. It defines the contractual terms. It's meant to facilitate and ease this process. Um, and it's not in confusing legal terms. No offense to lawyers, I just, <laughs> I'm, that can be confusing. And I just like muddle all through all that and just like one, two, three, how do we do this? It's, it's very straightforward. Um, on the technology side where I'm currently at Sternum, we are working with manufacturers, we're actually empowering them to implement the solution, implement security design into the, the medical device from conception and legacy device as well to proactively mitigate threats. And we do this by preventing the exploitation of the vulnerability. I'm gonna get into how we do that in a, in a minute here, in my first example actually. So, 2020 Medtronic, I was an engineer at the time, a product security engineer at the time, a practitioner of medical device security. And a secure, independent security researcher approached Medtronic and said, hey, you guys, we found a vulnerability. It's bad. And I can remember what I felt at that time was disbelief. I thought, no way, you did, like, no way, not this old patient reader. This is a class three medical device this one right here. It's used for interrogating implantables to send patient data back to uh, the physician to treat the patient. So, so important um, patient safety implications with it. But so anyway, if I really think about this and the very first preliminary step that Medtronic took was listening to the security researcher. And at the time, 2000, I mean, it's only a few years ago, it, that, was, that was a big deal. There was um, kind of a distrust in the security research community. This is from my experience, of course, at the time. But Medtronic said, we're gonna listen to you guys. Show us what, what, what you're saying, make us believe it. And so the security researcher came to Medtronic and demonstrated before everyone's eyes on this little patient reader, the exploitation of the vulnerability. And we believed them. <laughs> okay, you, you're right. You found something here. We need, to, we need to respond. We need to do something about it. And so what that looked like, actually one comment on that, the lead firmware engineer who designed the firmware code for this device, his jaw dropped and he said, how did you get my code? <laughs> and it, it was funny because that was actually the easiest part of the exploit for this researcher. And thankfully, this was a good researcher. This was a white hat. They, they wanted to do, they wanted to make this device better. Okay, so fast forward, we needed to perform a product security risk assessment. And in short, what that resulted in was the validity of this vulnerability. Indeed, we are at risk and it is a high risk. Furthermore, there was potential patient safety impact. That is a non-negotiable with medical device manufacturers. Quality is paramount. I've, I saw it firsthand at Medtronic. We do not compromise patient safety. And so Medtronic responded. And how they did that with our solution that we're talking about here today 
was implementing sternum's threat prevention. So we took the, um, the patient reader and we embedded into it on the device a proactive, um, uh, it's kind of a complex technology that I need to explain more in depth outside of this presentation in the interest of time. But what it does is prevent the exploitation of the vulnerability that the researcher found and future vulnerabilities, unknown vulnerabilities, the next zero day, preventing them in its tracks proactively. So we implemented the technology onto the device. It doesn't stop there. You have to distribute that patch. We'll call it a patch. It, this is where the HDO needs to collaborate with the MDM. Medtronic delivered the patch. Now the HDO needs to distribute it to the affected device population. Without that piece, you're still vulnerable in the field. Um, and so what, what, talking about the model contracts, this is, this is outlined and defined in, I guess it's uh, clause 35, patch management. Simple steps, one by one. Um, oh, and then the other part of that in terms of the responsible disclosure that I totally commend Medtronic for, because it, it took them working with the notified bodies, the, the, in this case it was CISA, to issue a public advisory to notify the, uh, the community, but that, that took a, a procedural step because there's a timing. You can't just tell the public, oh, we're vulnerable. You have to wait until you have the patch and you've given the HDO proper time to distribute it. So only a few years ago, uh, end result, risk reduction, risk containment, back up and running. And this device is still pre protected today. Fast forward to a few to today, this just happened at the end of last year. I was part of it. Um, it was a mid-sized manufacturer came to Sternum, where I'm working, and they had this pen test. It was the first time they pen tested a legacy device. And when I saw the report, my jaw dropped because it was the worst pen test report I've ever seen. It was bad. I, I just, I, I, I'm like, what? When was this de de design? I don't mean to, I don't mean to knock on the MDM, but, but this was, it's a legacy device. It was 15 years old, um, and so they were doing the right thing. They're like, oh, we think this is bad. Can you guys help us? And and Sternum did help. What, what we found was the root cause analysis of these critical vulnerabilities, and there were dozens, was due to significant design flaws in the device. It didn't make or the business sense for this manufacturer to completely redesign the device. So they needed a different solution. They needed technology. And the first piece of technology was runtime SROM prioritization. And so what, I mean, what that means in short is we have critical, dozens of critical findings. Each of those findings takes time to disposition, to triage, to understand if it's valid, if it's applicable, what are the risks and so forth. It's a lengthy process. So using a, um, an automated process for prioritizing those vulnerabilities using Sternum, we embedded it onto the device, we executed the, or we ran the device and during code execution, anytime code was executing, it extracted and determined what vulnerabilities were mitigated and what vulnerabilities were unmitigated. So we have this list of dozens. We just broke it down into an unmitigated and mitigated. The mitigated device the vulnerabilities, we know, okay, we're good. We can set those aside and focus our efforts and our energy and our resources on the unmitigated vulnerabilities. We need to do something about these. The next part of the technology was implementing the same solution that Medtronic did in our previous example of runtime protection. So embedding the software solution onto the legacy device uh, to proactively prevent threats and doing this by preventing the exploitation of those, our subset of unmitigated critical vulnerabilities. They are now mitigated. In combination with our procedural controls, we, um, looking to our model contracts, Clause 44, vulnerability management, the HDO now had from this manuf manufacturer for the first time, a dynamic SBOM and a plan for managing the vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities were managed. Um, final note on this example, uh, 
end of 2013, they're now up and running. This, this legacy device is on market and it is secure. All those findings mitigated. It's, I'm like looking for a reaction for, for my MDM friends because if you know how long it takes to implement change into medical devices, like one year, two year, three years, this is a few months. That's the fastest turnaround I've ever seen in my career. So I'm, I'm really happy and excited about that because when we look at our two examples from 2020 to today, it's not only are we doing it, we're implementing the solution, but we're doing it faster. And in closing, bringing us back to the mission that unites us, we're all friends here, MDMs and HDOs, we wanna get along. We all want the same thing and we can do it together through a process and technology. Um, and so I only got through a few examples in the interest of time, but if you wanna hear more, I have many more and I'd love to share them with you. We're over there, not far. We have a little booth, so we'd love to, to talk or con reach out to me in whatever an email, I guess. Thank you for joining the discussion and have a great uh, rest of your 